السلام عليكم uh, welcome back everyone to the second day of the seventh family medicine review course uh, we hope you found yesterday beneficial and we'd like to thank all our speakers from yesterday uh, we've got four lectures today uh, we'll start uh, our first lecture which is uh, dermatology highlights with a familiar face Victoria Maryam uh, Baghi she's been with us twice before and this is her third time with us uh, Dr. Maryam Baghi uh, has Arab board in dermatology and venereology. She has a fellow of Mount Sinai, New York in clinical dermatology and in aesthetic and non-surgical dermatology. She's the former head of the Arab board training program at the Ministry of Health in Bahrain. And she's the founder and clinical director of Navara Skin uh, Center. So welcome, Victoria Maryam, and the mic is yours. Thank you, Dr. Yusuf, for the kind... Uh introduction uh, ladies and gentlemen dear doctors and colleagues i'm very happy to be with you the third time over the online and i believe it or not i've never been to kuwait but uh, i always be happy to visit once inshallah soon but until then i'll be very happy to share with you pearls and important notes on uh, dermatology an essential part of it that is related to your practice and believe me you guys are very important armors or right hands to the dermatologist because you guys have a very important role to diagnose the important diseases or tackle the important symptoms and send them for tertiary or refer them to the tertiary care now you may be surprised this is not a proper first slide but i'm going to tell you a smaller story before we start uh, I've been repeating this story for three years because it's a very good example on how dermatology is really important to all specialities, not only for us as dermatologists, not only for you guys as family doctors, to any specialty. I was sitting in my clinic around four years ago, and a colleague from rheumatology sent me a patient next door, a rheumatology case. She's following up for rheumatoid arthritis on several medications. We can't name all of them. And he told me she has a very severe eczema. And when she walked inside the clinic, what uh, we were seeing at that time is excoriation around the umbilicus. And uh, of course, for any case, we have to examine head to toe. And upon examination, we could see this. If you can focus on the picture, you're going to see a little bit of excoriation and red lesions on the hairline and if you focus more you're going to find hair nets attached to the hair shafts so actually this was a case of head lice and because the patient was immune compromised on multiple medications uh, we actually could find a a colony of lice in her uh, scalp actually the lice was walking all around her clothes we could even catch one of these and i've sent it as a souvenir and a small pack to the rheumatologist back again She's a friend. It was just a joke telling her that you need to examine her to toe before referring the patient. So the diagnosis was an id reaction, which is an eczematous reaction type. Secondary to pediculosis capitis. So regardless of your speciality, I think having a good eye and having some simple pearls and a good background of simple dermatology diseases is really important. So here am I. Uh, I'm Dr. Maryam from Bahrain, and I'll be having a small talk with you. It's a very long uh, presentation. I cannot cover all important points of dermatology in one hour, but I hope we can go through the black lines at least. And I'll be very happy to join you whenever you need me to finish the rest of the subjects. Um, but we're going to start with important pearls that apply on any dermatology case. So if you have any rash, just ask the patient what's the nature of this rash. Is it painful? So if it's painful, maybe we'll think of herpes zoster or acute stuff. Is it burny? So maybe we'll think of contact dermatitis. Is it itchy? Are you talking about eczema or a bite? So describing the rash is really important. Number two, the timing of the rash. It's really important to ask, are you having this rash since 10 years or it just started after coming back a week from the honeymoon? Uh, asking about family history, trust me, that can cheat you a lot, especially in the cases of scabies. Sometimes scabies is difficult to diagnose, right? Do you agree with me? But having a family history of the rash among everyone after coming from a hotel or a vacation can cheat you with the diagnosis. Asking about drug history, in the case of our patient, travel history, so some itchy bumps after traveling, coming back. It's either, you know, uh, something from the hotel or infection they got from the bathtub. So ask about the travel history, recent one, I mean. Uh, asking about systemic symptoms is very important. And along these lines, you can understand the importance of that. 
When you examine, please remember that dermatology is beyond the skin. So to complete your examination, the scalp, nail, mucous membrane that includes the mouth and genitals are included in the examination. Uh, as a rule of thumb, in your family practice, even in the busy schedule, when you have any oozy lesion, any lesion that oozes a liquid or it oozes something, swab it and send it. You can get surprised for gram staining, culture, and COH. So it can be a fungal, it can be an infected eczema, it can be a bacterial. So always send it for uh, gram stain and culture. Any doubt for rash, biopsy it. Do not hesitate. Actually, where I was taught at the beginnings, even cases of psoriasis, they used to biopsy it at the first visit just to rule out very rare mimicker, especially, you know, in the Western world, they care about the, um, the, 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 the you know, low case. Uh, there are a lot of lawyers waiting to, to gain money from these uh, misdiagnosed cases. So taking a biopsy is an easy step. You may not do it yourself. You may send it for a dermatology colleague. When we're talking about a mold that has been there for a year, Recently, it has been, been itchy or oozy or red, or it's been changing in color or shape. So in doubt, always send for biopsy. Any scaly lesion that has a scale, and it's usually a single one, and these scales are not going with you know treatment, scrape and send that scale for cytology. Very easy. You can use a blade. You can use just a cotton tip without harming the patient. Take the scale and send it. It can also surprise you. Sometimes you can get tinea corporis or fungal infection and you get surprised. Uh, it is because of that simple scrape that you send for cytology. Any nail lesion before making a judgment. Oh, this is tinea. Take the antifungal. You know, today we try to avoid antifungal with some reports of sudden death, especially with, uh, you know, um, um, nuzural tablets. Uh, we had some reports of sudden deaths in young age groups. And in our, you know, culture, in the Gulf culture, we have a lot of fatty liver diseases. And, you know, antifungal, they affect indirectly the liver. So I try to avoid giving unnecessary antifungal courses by taking simply the nail clip. Very easy. Let them grow the nail for two weeks, clip it, send it for culture, and make sure it's a tinea. Well, you get surprised. Maybe it's psoriasis, nail psoriasis. So taking a nail clip is easy. Doesn't you know? It's cheap. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and it doesn't take a lot of time. Anyway, any chronic lesion that recently changed, as I told you earlier, biopsy. So these are the pearls that apply on any case of dermatology, regardless whether you know the diagnosis or not. I would say these are the safety boundaries that will make you practice safely, even if you had a case and you had no clue what are you dealing with. So I'm going to start with the first, first category, which is the category of the acne and the acneform eruptions. And uh, this is a very common um, entity that you guys face. Uh, in our body, I'll try actually to, to focus on the management part as I was told yesterday. So we're gonna brush on the, the pathophysiology and the types quickly, skip some slides so we can gain more time focusing on the treatment part and the management part, and hopefully we have time for Q&A. So these are the type of the hair follicles we have in our bodies. The villous hair, the sebaceous follicles, or the which are the hair follicles that have sebum production, which are the ones we care when we talk about acne. So wherever you have acne, you have sebaceous follicles, face, chest, and back. And um, we have the, the 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 terminal hair, which are the beard area. But you focus on the middle one, which is the sebaceous follicle. This is the one we care about. So we want to know what are the things, uh, what are the classification of acne? Actually, you can never classify it, but I found this classification very um, manual or easy to use because it will cheat you um, on the treatment. So I have category one, which is acne related to intrinsic causes, which are things we can't explain really. The famous acne vulgaris. Vulgaris for gildia and classical. So acne vulgaris, if it's very severe and it comes into big bumps and lumps, we call it acne conglobata. And if it comes in a certain entity in teenagers with osteolytic bone lesions, we call it acne fulminans. Very rare, but it's good to know the name. Category number two, are acne that happened because of extrinsic reasons. For example, when you have a simple pimple during the period and she starts to play with them and she induces the cascade of acne, 
So she is excoriating the acne. We call it acne excoriate. So that explains the pathophysiology. When you travel to South Asia for the first time, you don't, you know, the weather does not suit your skin very well. You come back with acne form eruption. It's called acne tropica. When you have acne because you're using very heavy foundation or you change the makeup line and suddenly you got it, we call it acne cosmetica. So these are not related to hormones and stuff. These are all extrinsic causes. That's why taking a bit of a quick history can cheat you. Simply just give her a good wash, stop the, ex you know, the extrinsic factors and voila, you're done. And of course, we have childhood acne. You've got a lot of relatives showing you the baby, one month old, two month old, six month old, telling you they have these lesions on the face. So you know there's an entirety in childhood, whether neonate or infantile period. It's called neonatal acne and infantile acne. Basically, we just reassure the mothers. We're just going to show you pictures of these. And there are things that looks like acne, and they're not acne, similar to rosacea. We'll talk about rosacea in, in, a, in a second. So rosacea is not acne. It is something similar to acne that looks like pimples, but there's some clues to diagnose rosacea. And of course, a list of other conditions like steroid acne for people taking steroids, perioral dermatitis, people having some papules around the mouth only or some papules around the eye only, and the dermatologist who doesn't know what he's doing, he was rushing, or the doctor who didn't know the diagnosis, they would give the patient steroids and, and use a long cascade of resistant papules. Actually, there is an entirety of acne that happens only around the orifices, mouth, and eyes, and we call it perioral dermatitis. I don't know why do we call it dermatitis? It's acne. It's a misnomer, but the treatment of it's similar to acne, antibiotic and other lines. I'm going to show you pictures of that later. And other types of acne that I don't want to waste your time with. We're going to see pictures later to summarize the time. So let's talk about the classical acne. Uh, it has different flavors, and we know it's chronic, and we know a lot of teenagers have it. And that is the most important slide. If you want to remember one thing about acne, remember this slide. I, I've changed the lecture uh, in a way or another, but that slide stayed the way it is because it's the bread and butter understanding the mechanism and the pathophysiology of acne formation. If you understand that, trust me, you're going to master the treatment. You wouldn't need a dermatologist. Follow me from A. So this is A, the beginning of the formation of acne. We have a sebaceous gland that produces sebum, and we have a tunnel that hugs the hair. It's called the infundibulum. And that tunnel excretes dead skin, which is the keratin cells. It's a normal scenario. Your body and your good hygiene can just take this excess skin and excess sebum out, and that's it. But if you have genetic tendency, poor hygiene, or the hormone of the adolescence period exceeds your hygiene, and there is more sebum excretion with more dead skin, you will start with a step one of the formation of acne, which is the blockage of this hair follicle opening. So, cement and water, sebum and dead cell. So we have this gooey material and you will block the hair follicle. If you were smart enough, and you use a good hygiene, good soaps, we will stop at that part. But then if it's left, then step two will happen, slide B. So you'll have a blockage of the hair follicle, a collection of this gooey material, and then we will start to call our bacteria. That bacteria, Propionibacterium acne, is a gram-negative bacteria that lives already in the base of the hair follicle. It's asleep, it's a mute, it's naive. But once we have this very bad environment, it gets activated. And once bacteria gets activated, polymorphonuclear cells will come. So an inflammation is happening. So A and B, the patient will tell you, I have comedones, skin lesions that are under the skin. In Arabic, patients use, I have a skin, 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 C, they will start telling you, I have painful papules. Doctora, I have whitehead lesions. So, in Arabic, the doctor is going to come out. And when I touch it, it's painful. So, A and B is non-inflammatory. C and D is inflammatory because the bacteria started to come and inflammation is going on. Our aim simply is to stop the process of from, number, from slide A, clean and open, reduce the sebum excretion, and in C, 
Once we have painful lesion, whitehead lesion, remember, we started the inflammatory lesion. So our aim is to clean, of course, and add antibiotic to lessen the bacteria colonization. And our aim is not to reach D because D is the catastrophe of the skin. Halas, the inflammation has bur <coughs> burst and you started having scar formation. Fatilak it will like nudab, athar, marks, brown spots. Excuse me. So we have this simplifying the process of acne. And if you remember this, you will be able to treat. So there is no point, no point of giving antibiotic to slide A. The patient coming to you with only one or two comedones. Why are you giving antibiotic exactly? So from A to B, you can give a good hygiene and you can give retinol to open this close up pores and slide C and D focus on everything, including antibiotic. I hope you guys focus with me through, through that slide. Other factors that induces more acne and makes it worse, stress, definitely. You're stressed, cortisol level will be higher. Always ask about the occupation of my patients. Pressure, I mean mechanical pressure. I had a case of acne in the player of the national team of uh, fencing because they were this uh, you know, shield around the face and it's pressing only the forehead. So she always gets the pimples on the forehead. When I knew her hobby and she was playing the fencing, I knew why I could explain the lesion were only on the forehead. Drugs, there is a, there is a big list I'm going to show you. And food, it's a big debate, but let me summarize it. Dairy product has been proven, especially low fat ones. F uh, fatty food, of course, definitely. You eat fat, you get more fat over here. And we said fat causes blockage of the hair follicle in the slides that I've showed you earlier. So food is related more of high glycemic index food. So I tell them go on a healthy lifestyle that helps you in every derma disease, not only in acne. Of course, old fashioned cosmetics, very heavy thick foundations, um, oily ones that had petrolatum jelly or lanolin, which are the fats, they're not good, they can block your pores. And of course, people who use a lot of primers to make the foundation flawless every, every, every day, that's gonna block your pores and you're gonna have acne formation. And of course, heavy sunscreens, and that's why we tell the patients, please choose the good sun cream. Now, this is the last of the most important, not everyone, but the most important medications that uh, can cause acne. So taking a drug history, if you don't have time, I let my nurse take the important medical and drug history for every single patient coming to my practice. So people uh, on chemotherapy, people taking INH preventively or for treatment, steroids, as we said, people on OCPs for any reason, people on anti-malarials for any reason, anti-epileptic, for any reason. And number seven is interesting. I had a consultation when I was a resident for a case. She went to the operation without acne. She woke up after the sedation next two days. Then she started to have acne form of eruption. Uh, and, and because we, we used to read during that time, we knew that the, the sedating materials, the, the ones used before the operation, uh, chloral hydrate, it can cause actually acne form of eruption. Long-term use of penicillins and occupational wise people in the factories working with bromide and iodine they can get acneform eruption this is a descriptive or a graphic term of the description that we used earlier this is a skin colored lesion which is the comedone and then we got the papulopustular the small ones once they're bigger than half a centimeter we call them nodules or nodular lesions I've described everything uh, earlier. Let's look at pictures. Time to see some pictures and understand what I'm talking about. Look at these, the black spots. These are the black heads. These are the white heads. Simply when it's closed, it's white. When it's oxidized by air because it's open, it gets black. And here are the red painful ones. Regardless of the size, regardless of the terminology, we have a papule, a pustule. A pustule is a white head. We have a big one under the skin, so it's a nodule. And notice that all of these look red and beefy. So we call them inflammatory lesions. Mild and moderate and severe, trust me, that's crap. I don't use it in my practice because one lesion in my face may could be considered very bad and severe. 
uh, an actress can come to you with the three pimples and she's in a catastrophic psychological state. And I have teenagers who have a face filled with acne and they say, you know what? I don't want to consider any tablets. I just want to wash a soap and a cream. So it's very relative. I would take that you know, the patient's perspective into that rather than mine. Uh, do we need to investigate every case of acne? Don't waste your resources, please. But if you're thinking of hormonal lesions, yes, do hormonal profile. If you're thinking of other medical conditions, do. If you're thinking of a starting systemic treatment, of course, you would do labs as a baseline. But we wouldn't go screening every female for PCOS, except if I have the features of PCOS. Of course, you know them. It's beyond our talk today. Or if I was keeping in my mind, I'm going to start step two uh, tablets and I want to save the time of my patient. I tell them I'm going to screen you as a baseline for the future. So these are the two scenarios you can ask screen your patient suspecting an underlying cause or uh, preparing him for future um, treatments, systemic treatments. Coming to the management, and trust me, I think the general recommendations are more important than the treatment itself. Giving you an example, I had a case of a female who had acne, which was very mild, came to me back telling me that your treatment failed. And I walked with her through the steps. It turned out that the patient was loving the soap. So she used to wash her, her face with the soap six times a day. And um, I told her definitely, this is a category called acne detergents. It's because of using too so much detergents on your face. You know, in dermatology, we have a name for everything. We like to term things. <laughs> so anyway, that was a form to impress my patient and convince her to lessen the use of her soap. So she they have to understand the steps and how simple they are and not to get overexcited and use a lot of it and not to ignore it for days and use it once a week. So number one, don't squeeze the lesions because simply you can turn them into inflammatory lesions. Limit the washes to you know two to three times per day. And now a day I'm telling my patients, wash only at night. In the morning, look at your face. If it was dry, do not wash it. If it was oily, wash it. So look at your skin. It tells you a lot of the tips. Read your skin. Uh, as we said earlier, any cosmetics or sunscreens that are oily based, change it to water based. And if the patient was on OCP, I will consult my gynecology colleague to change it into more estrogen, low progestin formation. Now, coming to the drug therapy, as I told you, there are three targets in the treatment of acne. Number one, I want to open the obstruction. Okay. Number two, I want to lessen the inflammation and the bacterial colonization. And number three, I want to lessen the you know, the progression of the lesion and the scars. So number one, we're going to use a good wash. But honestly, these are the ones I use. Cheap sulfur, antibacterial, I don't like it. It dries you a lot. So I use over-the-counter ones. Just for your information, azelaic acid is category B in pregnancy. So if you had a pregnant lady with acne, you can go with anything that has azelaic acid safely because it's category B. The rest of the ones I can use them for my teenager cases or my regular cases, the non-pregnant cases. Now, as we said, two targets, open the blocked pores, anti-inflammatory. So common sense, I'm going to use antibacterial, whether clindamycin, whether benzac, whether skinurine. Yes, skinurine, azelic acid, can do two things, antibacterial and can bleach the spots. So I can either use either one of these, okay? Or dialysin. Name it. المنتج اللي عندكم. أهمشي, you know, inflammatory lesion, pus heads, I will use bacterial. Uh, or anti antibiotic, I mean, topically. And I need to open the pores. So I need something comedolytic that opens the head of the lesions. Simply use anything that has written A, acritine. Usually start with lower formulation of 0.025 and then upgrade it. I rarely upgrade. I always stick to 0.025. I think in the Gulf, it suits the skin. Do not use a fusidine. That's why I put it in this slide. You're going to form, you know, resistant form of bacteria. Fusidine is not used for the acne. Please limit it for something else in the body. For the face, stick to something else as I showed you. So don't be terrified. We'll simplify. Just read the bold ones. So step one, over-the-counter topical medication for six weeks, which means I'll use a wash and one product. 
lesions are not inflammatory, I'll give her something like benzoyl peroxide, or I'll give her something like acretine. Lesions are inflammatory, I'll try to give something that targets both, like azelaic acid. Anyway, monotherapy with a wash and a cream. Six weeks, bring the patient, reassess. Not working, step number two. So we're gonna add something else. A topical lesion, like a, a topical agent, like antibiotic or benzyl peroxide or azelaic acid, and a comedolytic lesion, which is acretine, and assess again in six weeks. If the patient is not working well with these, then I try to shift and match, add more antibiotic. If all of this was not working, obviously I will step to tablets. Now, tablets are not only isotretinoin. I, lo I love this medication. Uh, top uh, Tablets means either antibiotic or roaccutane. And you have to know that long-term use of antibiotic is not a good idea at the age of COVID. Uh, we're seeing more and more of weird strains of bacteria and infection. So if you want me, هذا الكلام غير علمي هاي على مسؤوليتي أنا مريم. إذا بتخيرني بين I start for severe cases I'm talking about. Antibiotic or roaccutane. صراحة I would prefer roaccutane. It's not a walk in the garden. I'm going to show you some signs that will terrify you. But for me, it's better than washing the body, good and bad bacteria, and having a relapse in four months. And I never exceed three months with antibiotic. Usually we would vibromycin or doxycycline, 100 mg OD. Out in the Western world, they use 100 mg twice a day. Their stomach is a steel. It can tolerate the antibiotic. Most of our patients will give them معدة وحما. بعطهم المضاد يرجعون لك. What have you done to me? So I prefer roaccutane. So roaccutane speaks for itself. And I'm pretty sure among the audience are people who tried it themselves or someone close to them. It really changes the patient's life. And until today, we don't know how it acts. But I can tell you, it acts over the four steps of acne formation. It is comedolytic. It prevents the colonization of bacteria. So yes, it has some antibacterial effect. It uh, lessens the inflammation and it repels the polymorphic nuclear cells from the hair follicle base. And it helps you to get a clear skin in a short time because it shrinks the size of sebaceous gland. So that is why the relapse rate after a proper course of roaccutane is less than the relapse rate of antibiotic. بالمنطق. الانتيبيوتيك بيعالجك بس جزئية البكتيريا وشوية انتي انفلاماتري. Roaccutane works even on the size of sebaceous gland. خلا اقول لكم سر. That's why a lot of people think باخذ الراكوتين لانه يصغر حجم الخشن. Uh, it's crap. I don't like to advertise for that, but it, it has a point because it lessens the size of sebaceous gland. فينشف كل شيء وما منها الخشم فينشف فيعطيهم يحاء المصار أصغر يعني. So the indication, any lesions that are very bad scarring or not responding to the lines that we mentioned earlier. What is the dose for you guys? You have to remember 0.5. So we start maybe less than 0.5, yani 0.2, 0.3, but the target is 0.5 per kg. You really have to reach the cumulative dose. I know lots of debate been lately about the cumulative dose and you don't have to reach it. Trust me, these studies are done on Western skin. You have to reach the cumulative dose. What does that mean? It means you have to give the dose high enough, long enough, to reach a cumulative dose of 100, 120 to 150 per kg per body weight. يعني لا تقولي أنا أخذ 10 مليغرام That's a game play. You're wasting your time. Give a proper dose. That's my alarm to 0.5 per kg for a proper duration, which is around nine months. زايد قاصر على حسب وزن الشخص. What are we talking about? And um, it really depends on the case. Are we talking about severe acne, mild acne? Is she considering childbearing? So I have to stop earlier. That really depends. We have a list of side effects for Accutane. So that starts with acne dryness on the skin. And when you have dryness in the skin and the cracks, bacteria can get an, uh, an access. That's why you see lots of people with poor hygiene having secondary staph infection, uh, like you see impetigo and others. So make sure to hydrate your skin. Photosensitivity is there, so make sure to protect your skin with an SPF. What applies on the skin from dryness applies on the eye. So you can get a dryness, reduction of the night vision, and secondary bacterial infection. So ask your patient to use artificial eye drops. Atuham, for the plan if they visit you for follow-up for labs in the health center. 
Uh, the bone side effects are the ones I care about because there is something called ditch syndrome, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, which means bone formation. It happens in the axioskeleton, very rare. I've seen it once in my life from 2005 until today. And basically the patient will complain from severe, severe, severe electrical shock-like bone pain and the lower back or the bottom of the feet, not a regular pain. I stop the Rakuten, send them for radiology. They can diagnose it radiologically. Just remember to ask the patient, do you have bone pain? We are Adi, it's okay. Just massage, do exercising. La wallah, I have severe pain, shock-like. I can't move, stop it, see a radiologist. And of course, if you give it for children, it can cause premature epiphyseal closure. That's why we don't use it for kids, 18 plus. The famous side effect, it can cause lipid derangement, especially on triglycerides. So I never give Accutane without a baseline. I repeat my lab test two weeks, two months, and then everything is okay. I don't repeat it. This is the new consensus. All of the days we used to repeat the labs every two, 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 two months. It's not applicable anymore. Baseline, two weeks and two months, and that's it. Of course, take the history of um, gastrointestinal disease. Because if the patient has irritable bowel disease that is very severe and out of control, uh, you can't give her Rakuten. I've made an exception in my life. I worked closely with GI consultants, and we could give Rakuten in low doses for some resistant cases. But remember this one, please. As family doctors, if you're on the shift, and a case of Accutain, a patient of acne on Accutain, come to you with severe pain or abdominal pain, Please rule out pancreatitis. One of the rare side effects of high dose of Accutain, especially people taking it without medical supervision, it can cause idiopathic pancreatitis. Liver derangement, enzyme derangement. So yes, that's why we do the baseline two weeks and two months. We check all of these LFT, CBC, and uh, fasting lipids. And uh, for cases of severe hypothyroidism, I consult my endocrinologist. Am I allowed to give Vacotain? Most of the time the answer is yes, but there is a rare side effect of hypothyroidism. The debate about diabetes is um, low evidence and I just put it for medical, uh, you know, scientific reference. It is not considered valid anymore. Remember that Accutane can lower all the blood counts. That is why you do it at the baseline, two weeks, two months, in addition to the LFT and fasting lipids. And if you give Roaccutane and concurrent with some antibiotics, that's your chore to Google and, and search for this list of antibiotic, it can raise the blood pressure of the brain. That is why if you're taking Accutane, warn your doctors if they're in a rush, Please, I'm taking Accutane. Our skin infection, they give you an antibiotic. And if the patient was taking antibiotic and he wants to start a cutane, I give a washout period of at least 10 days to two weeks. I take nothing in the body. Then I give him the Roaccutane. And of course, the regular bone pain and body pain and hair falling, SF, that's a usual side effect of it that we can manage it with over-the-counter stuff. It's category X, which means that the patient takes it without contraception. There will be you know, deformities to the newborn or the fetus, especially the neurological, cardiovascular, and morphological. So please make sure she does not get pregnant. Make them sign on a consent and use two methods of contraception. So we end up the acne vulgaris, showing you just pictures of some entities we started with talking about earlier. So this is a neonatal acne, chubby cheeks with pimples. I don't do anything for them. I tell the mother, stop kissing the kid on the cheeks. Don't use oils on the cheeks. It will settle by itself. And mostly I don't need to add anything else. If they're older, then the infantile, uh, then the infantile acne ha happens. Usually it's rare. I've never seen it. I usually see it in the newborn period. It's so transient because of the maternal hormone. It goes by itself. No need to interfere. No need to panic. Acne pomade, remember this name. It's usually in house... Um, House workers, especially Africans who like to groom their hair, they put on acne only over the hairline. So ask her, are you grooming your hair with any kind of oil? Yes, stop it. This is acne pomade. This is the more severe entities that I told you. Acne vulgaris, then comes acne conglobata, which is the severe type. I may 
Don't do it. I'm just trying to open your horizons to more things in the management. We may give steroids in the beginning to lessen the inflammation and then boom, come with Rakuten. How do you see the Rakuten? Maru antibiotic. So this is one of the indications to start Rakuten immediately, which is severe inflammatory acne or what we call it in dermatology, acne conglobata. Gram-negative folliculitis, all of them are the same shape and color and size. All of them are white hairs. This is when patients use antibiotic for longer than three months. antibiotic. Rare, because people are more aware nowadays. Best remember gram-negative folliculitis. طبعاً the treatment is to stop any antibiotic and start to acutane. So all these are indications to start acutane from the start. This is periolar dermatitis. So um, this is the case that I showed you earlier when you have papules only around the mouth or papules only around the eyes. The treatment is with topical antibiotics similar to acne. Here we come. I'm trying to manage my time to come to the uh, eczema, but running as fast as I can. So one of the lesions that looks like acne, but it's not acne, is rosacea, el wardia. It comes from the Latin terminology. Rosacea is like rose, so that's why it's wardia, wardi, okay? It's chronic, and when I have a case of it, we're going to start a long journey. I have never seen a case of rosacea that resolves 100% without a relapse. It's very nasty, very chronic. Tell your patients it's a chronic. It's common among females, more among females. You gentlemen, you're lucky. So uh, we don't know the reason of it. It has multifactorial. But I have noticed something in all rosacea patients. Uh, almost 90% of my patients, they have GI upset. Ya colon, ya gastritis, ya bloating. They're always stressed, always on the go. Their food and lifestyle is not the best. Drinking four cups of caffeine per day, junking around. It's always a part of it there. rosacea. Ditch all the medications, ditch all the creams, and focus on your lifestyle for God's sake. I have 30% of the input. You guys have 70% of the input. Focus your lifestyle. Working with the food plays miracles with rosacea. Working on the lifestyle, lessening the weight, work miracles on rosacea. You can't come to me and your weight is 100 kg. Ask me to remove your rosacea. I can't. Lower your weight and then come to me asking me to remove it, okay? Number two, there is a theory. Number two, honey. There is a theory that a mite that lives on the skin called Demodex follicularum plays a role to produce rosacea, especially the papular one. And remember this slide when I told you about the update of the treatment, okay? So we don't know the reason, but we know it's related to the GI health, weight, lifestyle, stress, smoking, chronic medications, a paper, patient, patients playing with their face, doing chemical peel for no reason, and using harsh routines and patients, you know, doing tanning all, all the summer long. So they're harming the skin with UV radiation and having extra sun exposure, so damaging their barrier. And of course, a lot of food lists can release histamine. Whatever food releases histamine will induce you more rosacea, like excess of caffeine, excess of chocolate, excess of they all release histamine. So excess of them can make your rosacea worse. And this is a list of the common ones that I already mentioned to you that plays a role in rosacea. Focus on them. They're all lifestyle. So 70% of the treatment of rosacea is focusing on your lifestyle. يعني مو لازم تطلع لي تلعب ماراثون وتراي ثالون إذا عندك روزيشة الساعة ثنتين الظهر أو عندنا برشة دكتور أنا لازم أطلع أت أتشمس مع ربعي we're doing tanning sessions I'm sorry dear so don't come to visit me again because you're having a very important trigger and you're not controlling it. Two components of rosacea: redness, papules. So. Two components, vascular changes and acneform eruption. Some people have only the redness, بس أحمر. And some people, that's why I'll show you the subtype. Some people will have أحمر مع حرار. So papular lesions. So the, how this is how we classify rosacea. Erythematotalangiectatic, which is erythema and telangiectasia. 
this is only redness, nothing is there. At the beginning, the redness comes and goes. And then the patient will tell you the redness is always there, doctora. I'm shy or not. It's always there. So this is the step one of rosacea. Step two is papulopustular, which means I'm having papule and pustule. It has all the lesions of acne, the regular acne, except the comedon. Rosacea, mafi comedon, mafi rosauda obeba. Fi papulopustule. This is how we differentiate it. And another key to differentiate it from regular acne is the red background. And a third key to differentiate it, it usually comes only in the centers. In the mid cheeks, mid chin, mid forehead. Usually the rest of the face is clear. So three keys to differentiate it from regular acne. So these are pictures of type two of rosacea, papulopustular. Type three rosacea, is an entity by itself. It doesn't mean every patient of rosacea will get it. It's a subtype usually that happens in special, you know, racial backgrounds, uh, Persian backgrounds, بعض الأعراق, بعض الجوز. في أعراق معينة يصيدهم إن يكون في soft tissue enlargement of any part of the face. Nathophyma, rhinophyma. Metophyma. So any of these parts can be enlarged commonly or the nose. And you have to treat it separately. And may, we may need the treatment with Rakutane or plastic surgery to debulk, actually. You can watch some videos uh, of YouTube on CO2 laser ablation for rhinophyma. Very interesting. So these are pictures of how it starts, how it is in the middle of it, and severe cases, they describe it as cauliflower-like enlargement of the nose. And the last type of rosacea, Arjukum rakzufi, are the type of rosacea, um, special entity. But I remember a story. A gentleman came to me once in my clinic when I was in the governmental hospital. Uh, and uh, it was just given artificial tears. When he came to us, we diagnosed him as rosacea, and that was ocular rosacea, part of the skin. That was always focusing on the eyes. And the guy ended up with losing partially one of the eye vision, equity, and now Hassan Khan old. He was above, you know, above 60. So diabetes. If you just remember, do me a favor and remember, rosacea has many types, and one of the types is ocular rosacea. Whenever the patient has rosacea and she tells you it's burning, or she tells you, Madalish, always my eyelids are swollen and red. Think of ocular rosacea. You don't have to treat it, just send for an ophthalmologist. They will impress them by writing the referral with the impression of ocular rosacea. So fancy. Just remember the name. So these are pictures of it can be only swelling of the eyelids and it can end off uh, with conjunction or congestion, sorry, congestion of the whole conjunctiva and the eyelid can be also swollen. Now, how do we treat that? Your part, the important one, it's very hard. And what, this is what I tell my patients at the beginning. Remember the rule of 30-70. I have 30%, you have 70%. I usually spend the longest consultation with rosacea patients and psoriasis patients. Acne is quick, but this is really hard. I have to ask about the GI, their lifestyle. What are their hobbies? Does it include something that has the sun? What do you do in your uh, you know, spare time? Do you visit salons and do facials or not? What is your skin routine? What are you eating, darling? Do you smoke? So a lot of things to consider. And as anything in dermatology, treatment has two parts, topical and systemic. So typically, we can start with anything that has antibiotic. Because we said there is a role of some yeast on the skin. So either metronidazole, like Crozex, this is the gold standard, or azelic acid, skinurine, or any other antibiotic. Usually, usually we give metronidazole or azelic acid, one of these two, okay? The pictures of these, but there are new treatments on the horizon. We've been using this for the last five years, I think, maybe more. I don't remember exactly, but pulse dilator is a very important tool to remember when the patient has only redness, only redness. It's always red and you don't have much papules. I send them for pulse dilator, which is a certain laser to close the blood vessels. Very interesting. Success rate is very high, but you need a doctor like Dr. Sharifa Al-Awadhi for the Kuwait. She's very, very good with lasers. She used to be a colleague in Mount Sinai with me. 
A shout out to her if anybody knows her. She's amazing in the post dialysis. And another one is Mizu Botox. So Botox is beyond um, the luxury wrinkle erosion. Uh, wrinkle erosion, I mean. It's uh, it's a it's a tool because Botox actually lessens the size of the blood vessels. I don't like to use it. But I'm mentioning it for you here. If a patient asks you, because if it's misused, it can cause facial asymmetry. Totally not worth it. And it's transient. I wouldn't waste the money of my patient on that. So the new kid on the block is Merveso. Remember this. I think as family doctors, you should know these two products I'm showing you. Number one is Merveso. Merveso is FDA approved in 2013. What it does is that it closes the blood vessels. And it stays only for like eight hours to 11 hours. I hate it. My patients hate it. They tell me it works temporarily and then we have rebound redness. But it's FDA approved and I, got, I get the option for my patients who tried everything on planet Earth and still the redness is not working. This is, this, this is for the redness part. This is another kid on the block, which is Sulantra. I love it. The other way around. Why? Sulantra is Evermectin. Evermectin is anti-mite. We used to have it all in the days as pills. We used to give it for scabies. Now we have a topical formulation of Evermectin. And this Evermectin has been also FDA approved in 2014. And, oops, sorry, it works for the papillar part of the rosacea. So Sulantra, uh, sorry, Merveso was for the Laravicumia. Merveso is for the blood vessel, so redness. And Sulantra is for the papillar part. Success rate is very high. My patient loves it, most of them. And I love it because it does not cause irritation. Use it one to two times a day. Victoria Marim, we have around five minutes left. <laughs> is it worth it to go into eczema or shall I get some questions? We have around uh, seven minutes at the end for questions. So if you want to go through eczema as a quick Summary in around five minutes, seven minutes, that'll be okay. Exit in five minutes. That's like challenging <laughs> yeah, me to take a cake in a second. I don't know, it's okay. Whenever you want to stop me, Dr. Yusuf, do me the favor, okay? Yeah. So eczema is a very big entity. I couldn't summarize it more than that. Also, it's a chronic inflammatory lesion. Interestingly, the name comes from to boil. That's why the patient will tell you it's always boiling. It's eczema. Not shakhsli eczema, the lesion might hack. I get pissed off. Uh, yeah, Ahmar eczema. Did you ask the patient if he's itching or not? So if it's not itchy, it's not eczema, full stop. The cardinal sign to diagnose eczema, okay, Ahmar, Akhdar, it's itchy. And there are types of eczema, please remember this. There are endogenous types, nafs ashya min dakhl jismi, the classical atopic dermatitis, or eczema mashhura min al tafula, seborrheic dermatitis, and eczema duhniya. And others, I can't go all over all of them. You can screen the slides, shot them, take a picture and go over it later. And there are exogenous types of eczema. يعني أنا طول عمري ما عندي history of eczema. يا وات كلوركس تحسست. It's an exogenous type. يا هل عمره شهرين لابس حفاضة he gets a red bottom. Of course, it's exogenous type. جلد رقيق لا يتحمل. For these are not types to panic. We just remove the cause, and this is the best part of the treatment of exogenous type of eczema. So usually itching is a cardinal feature and lesions can be red, can be very well defined or poorly defined. Anyway, usually it's sharply defined, but not as much as psoriasis. But so what? Simply something red and itchy, regardless of the size, regardless of the shape. And the most common type of eczema when we talk about it is atopic dermatitis. Remember, eczema is not a diagnosis. Eczema can be like a asir. As an asir, you know, asir manga, asir faraula. That table I showed you earlier gives you the type of asir. So atopic dermatitis is one type of the juice, one type of eczema. So atopic dermatitis, remember, is a classical type of endogenous eczema. It starts with it since childhood, and we don't know the reason. We have genetics. We have immunological reasons, and this is the basis of today's research to find biological treatments 
I'll quickly go through the slide to show you the new biologics for uh, atopic dermatitis and, of course, environmental factors. People who are exposed to more antigens in their childhood, less risk of eczema. They have more risk of eczema because the immune system is not introduced to the allergens early in life. It's a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction, which means IgE plays a role, T helper 2 plays a role. We'll skip that. And usually in newborns and infants, they have it in the classical sites. Had Ahmar acute, Aqua Ruka. That's in childhood. When they grow up, Taglub for the flexures. Any mukan mahshush, hafadha chidi. Rugupti, underarmi. Awal for the infancy, kanatini. For the adult, hotatini. Awal kanat for the infancy on the knees from outside, then it goes in the cubital fossa from inside. So it goes in the flexure as you reach adulthood. There is uh, there are a lot of features on a baby of eczema that are not worrying. It's good to know them. And it's not a disease. Example, lines on the neck. We call them uh, extra neckline. That's normal. Nipple dermatitis. It can happen in a patient with eczema. Usually it's bilateral. If it's 17, 18, unilateral weird from mammogram. Remember this. Extra line under the eye. On عندي نفسها. My son has it. We call it Denny Morgan fold. The teeny واحدة عمرها سبعة عشر تقولي أبي فيلر. أي فيلر طال عمرك. عندك إكزما إيه. We call it Denny Morgan fold. It's one of the features of atopic dermatitis. White spots. The high mobahag. This is not vitiligo. We call it Pteris uh, alba. It's one of the features of atopic dermatitis, and it can happen in any kid going to the pool. Differentiated from vitiligo. White random spots, it happens in atopic dermatitis. Jilded dajaja, keratotis pilaris. Also, it happens in patients with atopic dermatitis. I have atopy, I have it on my shoulder, and I tell my patient I don't bother because I can't have a full treatment for it. Always they have a rim around their mouth, especially if they eat uh, citrus food. Normal in atopic dermatitis patient. Do we need to investigate bread and butter? No, except if the patient is having a lot of relapse, life-threatening, not responding to anything, I will send him to an allergist to do food allergy. Other than this, just take proper history. We don't need to investigate any patient to come in our clinic with IgE. The management starts with avoiding irritation. يسوى أخسر فلوس أغير من carpet to parquet. يسوى أغير the type of the furniture I have. I will avoid fur and hairy furnitures. I will avoid detergents. I'll go with organic ones, less scented ones. Uh, so this is avoiding allergens. When you bath the baby, it's better to have a tub. نقع في الماء. Then I put my moisturizers immediately after bath. We call it Schneider technique or the sandwich technique. Remember this. I put him in the bath, bring him out. Layer one is the grease, the filling of the sandwich. Layer two is the cream. So had technique مع مرضاك and they will get impressed. I call it the sandwich technique. It will make the moisture last longer. Now, اختيار المرطب, I put you some pictures. بعدين عمار يبطفنا صورة المرطبات ولا لا. Anyway. Steroids, very important part of the treatment. I can't go in details of it, but use it. Always take weekends off. My kid is going to use that all, you know, for one year, two years. It's okay. You have seven days a week. Use it five days. It took two days. Weekend off treatments will save you from the side effect of steroids. Number two, trick number two. Moisturize the skin before putting the steroids. This is another pearl or another trick to lessen the side effects of steroid. Number three, use the steroids that I prescribe you. Don't use something from a pharmacist over the counter. Three pearls to avoid the side effects of a steroid with a chronic use of eczema. Other options of the treatment, غير المرطبات والsteroids. We have narrowband phototherapy, cyclosporin, methotrexate, salsat. أنا سميهم الثلاثي المرح. The immune suppressant, I hate them. I don't want any kid to have them, but we can use it for rare cases that are resistant. Lastly, topical immune modulators, Nafsil Elidil or Protopic, as family doctors, you have to you know them. These are topical steroid-free immune modulators. You can't use them on active cases. You use them when the skin heals for maintenance. Once a day application for maintenance. I don't like them for infants and young children. Use it for older children, and uh, it works beautifully. 
for some of the cases, along with the moisturizers as maintenance, not as acute treatment. The last thing I'm gonna end with is what do we have as new options for our patients with very resistant, very severe cases of atopic dermatitis? We do have some biological agents. صارت الأبحاث وايد تركز على البيولوجيك ما أدري هل هو تسويق بزنس. I'm definitely part of it, yes. But also I'm happy that our resistant cases are having more options nowadays and more tools to use. So there are two biologicals, two injectables that has been FDA approved for cases of severe atopic dermatitis. واحدة منهم اللي هي الدوبكسنت. With Thania, who will add brief, both are biological treatments, but we can't use them for every age. Dupilumab, which is Dupixent, we can use it six months and above. Imagine, I would never do that. And the other one, Adbri, we can use it 18 plus. Saddigni Atli Chamsino, Bisamuna, Hak six months and above. I really like to save it for the very, very, very reluctant cases that I really stood in a corner without knowing what would I do for that patient. That's all folks for today. And I'll be very happy to have any question of you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maryam, for the very informative uh, lecture. Throughout the years, you've covered uh, most of the major topics in dermatology that we're facing in primary care. Thank you very much. Uh, we yeah. have a few questions in the chat. Uh, the first questions will focus on the acne, then we'll move on to uh, the eczema. So for the acne, they're asking about at the time of changing the dose of raw acutane, sh uh, should we repeat the investigation? Since you mentioned the at start in two weeks and two months. 100%. A baseline, two weeks, two months, doesn't, it's not related to the dose actually, except, except, Maria the end history of lipid derangement and the, the two months was mm, borderline, and they're not getting, you know, stick to the instructions, the dietary instructions I've given, I may repeat it once. But as a rule, baseline two weeks, two months, nothing related to the dose itself. As far as your dosing is based on the weight, as we said earlier. Perfect. Uh, another question we have is that uh, the psychological impact is an indication to refer as a primary care physician to a dermatologist for treating acne. So is the psychological impact uh, also an indication to lower the threshold to, to use isotretinoin? 100%. I've mentioned that through the slides. You know, I don't like to use that as a, as a bridge to over-prescribe my roaccutane. I'm totally against, or I, I would say it kindly in a kinder way, I'm disagreeing with physicians who say, we treat acne without acutane. That's not something to brag. It's an amazing tool. We still use it for people who are worth it. Uh, cases that are worth acutane, I mean. But I would also measure every case differently. But on a mock I would I will wait until I see 20 lesions on your cheeks. Then I may decide of starting you on acutane. If the patient was educated and a good health, he knows about it. And we feel the step one, which was six months, six weeks or two months ago. She used it perfectly. It's not working. Why wouldn't I? So I think psychological impact is really important. We should stop working. Uh, that's what makes us different than the, the you know, the ant artificial intelligence, the AIs. We have emotions to understand and uh, endure. So I would take it seriously. But I would consider the patient's emotion and input seriously yeah uh, perfect another questions we have uh, what's the best way to deal with a breakout during a course of isotretinoin okay there is something called the purge purge which means you will have a flare up or active lesions in the beginning of the treatment of anything whether antibiotic acutane it shouldn't last more than three weeks it should not last more than three weeks if it continued to happen Think of your dosing and ask the patient, how is she using other products or using a lot of makeup? It shouldn't happen with Acutane after four months. Wahda yimin yisari. Bread and butter, use something topical according to the shape of the lesion. Lesion was a comedone, topical acrotene can help. A pustule, antibiotic or azelic acid can help. Perfect. Uh, so moving on to eczema. Uh, so how long uh, do we use topical corticosteroids in moderate uh, eczema? And once the eczema is treated, do we continue with corticosteroids for maintenance? Thank you. Whoever asked this question, thank you. Thank you. It's very important. I didn't have time to elaborate on that. So again, bread and butter, try to simplify everything. 
if I have active lesion, I will use the steroid twice a day until it goes. Usually, if they use it properly, usually 10 days, okay? I tell them once the lesion goes off, stop the steroid and use it only twice a week. Uh, once a week. The idea is that I tell them don't stop at 100%. So use it once a week to prevent relapse. Number two, I'll go home, don't wait until the lesions are fully erupted. <laughs> you were in the pool and the kid started to have a small red rash over here. Why? So start it early. Number three, if a lesion kind of wired and I had to use it for a long time, like three weeks, I told you the secret. Use Weekends off, العكس, سبع أيام في الأسبوع, أستخدم الستيرود خمس أيام مرتين مرتين في اليوم, and then the weekends I stop it. And please remember, moisturizers are every day for life. يعني مو معناته بحط الستيرود بستخدم moisturizers once I'm off I stop it. You have to moisturize because one of the uh, inspects, uh, input sorry, of uh, the pathophysiology of atopic dermatitis is that barrier effect. Barrier defect, I mean. So by moisturizing, you're fixing the barrier. معناته relapse rate بكل كقل. I hope I answered the question. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Maryam. And we're looking forward to see you again in future courses, inshallah. Hopefully in person next time. Thank you, Dr.